The following presentation was recorded at the Aquaponics Association Conference in Tucson, Arizona on September 22, 2013. For more information or to join the Aquaponics Association, please visit their website at www.aquaponicsassociation.org. I'm Rob Torsolini from Bigelow Brook Farm and now we're having some technical problems. Um, we're from Eastford, Connecticut, um, you know, which is in New England, and we have plenty of cold weather, and it's sort of ironic that we have to talk about heating systems uh, here in sunny Tucson, Arizona. But uh, we're going to do that, and anybody, um, are you, most of you from like a colder climate where you're interested in heating and uh, augmenting a, a greenhouse or something like that? Um, I built uh, this greenhouse about uh, two years ago and decided to put in a, a rocket mass heater um, and it's integrated in with the building. And it's, so far it's been very good with, uh, with heating the, the system. So um, roughly some of the pros with uh, using a rocket mass heater is you can burn renewable resources in it, um, wood sticks and uh, all types of uh, really leafy debris and I think we're going to battle with this uh, all morning now. Uh, they also have very low uh, pollution output. It's mostly uh, carbon dioxide and water vapor that they emit. So it's um, um, a very efficient way. They burn extremely hot and burn off almost any pollutants that are in the system. It's going to be entertaining today. It's, uh, and because they burn so well, there's almost no smoke that comes out of them except for when you really just start them up and the, the system itself is getting up the temperature. And of course, I won't be able to remember anything. I don't know if we can find somebody that uh, can get this to work. And typically they use a lot less wood than a traditional wood stove would use. You know, typically a wood stove or a um, outdoor boiler um, you load them up with wood and they sort of smolder away most of the time and you're losing a lot of that energy up in the chimney because that, all that smoke that comes out of the chimney is really a combustible material uh, but because they're burning so um, cool uh, that smoke never combusts. You, know, you hear people that help, they'll have a chimney fire because they don't clean out the creosote in their chimney. That's all smoke that accumulates inside of a chimney um, and eventually it could catch on fire. Um, so with the rocket mass heaters um, they they just burn everything uh, that goes through, their, through them. Got less wood. They're fairly economical to build. Um, I built mine out of uh, a whole bunch of fire brick, um, some rock wool, uh, some stainless steel tubing. The majority of the people really use um, 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 Cobb, which um, Max Meyer had mentioned quickly um, in his presentation last night which is a mixture of sand, clay, and straw. And it just, you, you build a unit out of that and it basically self-fires and creates a nice solid uh, material that lasts a long time. Some of the cons with the rocket mass heaters is that they need to be fed regularly because they don't just sit there and smolder away all night long. They just burn full bore. And so, you have to keep feeding it. You know, about every 45 minutes, if you're burning wood, you know, standard size uh, chunks of wood, they just burn right through that. So, they're not a great idea if you want to do a long-term um, uh, burn with one of these things. A lot of people they'll set them up in their houses, and with the mass of it, and I'll show that in some later slides, the mass. Um, heats up with that initial burn and then that slowly radiates out the heat. Yes? Can you insulate the space so that the heat would stay there? Yeah. Yeah, you, you, there's some insulation inside the, uh, the heaters and then of course if it's in a building that's somewhat well insulated, um, you retain that heat. So the goal with the rocket mass heaters is that um, typically you just burn it with one or two batches of wood if you're sitting at home or something like that, you can feed it wood. And then you've heated up that mass, the heater itself, the fire can go out in that, and then you have this nice big uh, thermal mass that slowly radiates out um, into your home. Um, I've sort of taken mine to a different extreme and um, have 
I've set it up where it can do long-term burns to, to heat the greenhouse and um, it can burn for several hours without any attention and so we'll, we'll go into that too. Um, the rocket mass heater group, it's sort of like this whole underground uh, society, uh, mainly because these things are sort of put together by the home user and they don't meet building codes uh, for the most part. Even though they're extremely safe because you have this um, all contained usually within cob or 55 gallon drums and um, the way the heat comes out of them, there's no uh, high heat coming out of a chimney. You can, you can really get away with a lot of them, but it takes a little bit of practice and um, education on how they operate. And I'll show you some, um, some of the dynamics of that. Another issue is that they sort of need a large area to um, operate. You know, you have a little stove in your house or something. You have a nice little stove stuck in the corner and you throw some wood in it. The rocket mass heater you have, if you want to call it the stove part, but then you also have the mass after that. So a lot of people, they'll integrate um, the mass as a nice bench that they can sit on in their homes. Or in my case, uh, I put my mass underneath the floor of the greenhouse. And it takes a little bit longer to split your wood. Uh, typical rural thumb with uh, the rocket mass heaters is uh, the boards should, or the logs should be about the size of your wrist, uh, not much longer, because you need to get enough air around it to, to keep everything burning. Otherwise, sometimes you can get some smoldering. However, you have a little bit more wood to split. Typically over a standard um, heater unit, they use about one-tenth the amount of wood in some cases. I mean, there's people that I've talked to that they used to uh, burn through eight to 10 cord a year, and they install one of these and they can be at about one cord a year. So a lot of, a um, little bit more splitting into smaller pieces. It's easier to smit, split small wood than these big logs, so they have no problem or objection to uh, splitting up a little bit finer pieces. So just as a few references, um, not to put myself down, but I'm not like a leading expert in rocket mass heaters. I'm sort of presenting uh, to you how I set up uh, our system um, in our greenhouse, and it may not be for everybody, but there are some uh, very good folks out there um, that have some references. Um, part of my system is modeled um, from this book uh, by uh, Evans and Jackson, they wrote it uh, several years ago and they have some very good diagrams and explanations of how rocket mass heaters uh, work. So um, this is a book that you can uh, purchase online and um, you know it's just a nice PDF document and you can pick through it. And also um, Ernie and Erica Wisner, they are by far probably the most, um, done some of the most advanced work with rocket mass heaters out there. And they're coming out with a new book uh, this year, and they were, um, they were gracious enough. I, I talked to Erica, and she let me uh, borrow a couple of uh, images uh, uh, from their upcoming uh, book and from their website. And so um, they both teach classes in um, basically the art of fire and how to um, build rocket mass heaters. And they have some very good workshops, and they also have them posted online, too. And a lot of their work can be found on uh, the permies.com website, which is a, a pretty good permaculture uh, website that um, I have a friend, Paul Wheaton, that uh, runs that site. So um, a lot of good reference material um, on the permies site, and Erica and uh, Ernie actually frequent that site very often and answer questions. So let's talk a little bit about fuel types. Uh, typical fuel um, that people use in a rocket mass heater is dried cordwood, mostly hardwoods. Um, uh, there are people that use sticks. You can actually heat your entire house um, just with yard waste. People go around, pick up the sticks, and just feed it in, into the rocket mass heater. So there are people out there that have eliminated um, their heating bills uh, for heating their houses altogether. And uh, within the last year, I had developed a, a feeder for the rocket mass heater that I use for feeding pellets into the system. Um, running the greenhouse, I didn't want to have to get up every 45 minutes in the middle of the night to uh, feed uh, hardwood. So it was my incentive, because I'm lazy and don't want to be tired all the time, um, decided to uh, come up with a way to have a pellet feeder 
that could feed one of these units and not use any electricity. So it's a gravity fed system, it's self feeding and self cleaning. And I'll load um, usually two bags. Um, so it's uh, $4.18 a bag at Home Depot. It's the cheapest pellets I can find. I don't care what the content of the pellets are. You know, sometimes it's a different grades of pellets between hardwood, softwood mixtures. I actually find that the cheaper pellets burn better that have the softwoods in them. Um, I think it might be because of the resins that are in there. They just burn better at the higher temperatures. Um, so the, the pellets um, work very well for me. I can burn uh, 12 pounds an hour. You're at about 8,000 BTUs per pound in the system. So it's funny to watch this uh, thing feed it because it's almost like a lava flow of pellets just constantly going into the rocket mass heater. It's pretty cool. And um, recently I've been experimenting with uh, wood chips because not only I'm lazy, I'm very thrifty and don't want to have to spend $800 in pellets a year to heat my greenhouse. So I've been developing a modification to the, the feeder where it can uh, burn wood chips. We have a friend down the road from us that's an arborist. He cannot get rid of the wood chips anywhere. They just go, you know, they dump them off and they rot out somewhere. So he's been dropping off several truckloads of wood chips at our place and we've been uh, modifying them a little bit, a little bit of processing. And then um, working on getting it to feed in there. So uh, this upcoming winter, we're hoping to do some extra heating um, in the greenhouse for free. So how awesome is that to be able to heat a greenhouse when there's you know three feet of snow on the ground for completely for free? Yes, sir. I have access to a lot of um, untreated pine lumber, like lumber scraps. You can you can burn pine is it burns fast and hot, um, especially since it's already gone through in a kiln, uh, so it's very very dry. I've burned scrap wood in my system before. It's one of those things I would recommend you watch it just to make sure that um, you don't get any like back gassing out of it or it doesn't like become a runaway train and start burning really, really hot. But um, yeah, you can burn uh, waste wood in those. Uh, some of the other fuel types, while well, I talked about wood chips, I've seen per people doing uh, waste oil, motor oil and cooking oil. Um, I have to just caution about using that. I'm not going to tell you not to use it. Waste oil can have other contaminants in it and um, also they have a much higher BTU uh, rating to them so if you start feeding too much into it again you can get like the runaway freight train on one of these things where they just start burning really really hot and you'll start incinerating everything and you potentially can burn through the, uh, the barrel that's on there. I've seen people using coal um, or coal rice which is just a fine uh, coal dust uh, type and I did track down one person. He heats his house off of junk mail. So how about that? It gets delivered to your mailbox and you throw it in the heater. So he <laughs> yeah, he may subscribe to a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but again, with paper, you have paper that has you know, some plastics mixed in with it. And um, different paper burns at different rates. So you, that's one of those things you just have to be careful with. But there are... You know, this underground movement, they don't care what, you know, the government says on what you can and can't burn. So, um, you know, if you can heat your house with junk wood, I, I, I think that's, uh, on, you know, junk mail. It's pretty cool. Um, one thing I'll definitely caution against, never burn trash. It's just, you don't know what you're burning in there. And even though these things burn really hot, really clean, there are, you know, certain chemicals that it could start emitting through. So. Honestly, if you want to burn trash, just send it off, you know, bring to your transfer station. Hopefully there's, you know, some government improved trash burning facility that can really burn it at the, the proper temperatures. So places that these are used, typically it's in houses. Again, these are some of uh, Ernie and Erica's uh, heaters that they've installed in different places. And you can see there is a um, the barrel here, and we'll go into some of the, the details on how these uh, actually operate on the inside, but here's their uh, barrel where the heat's radiating out of, and then it exhausts here. And then this is the mass area here, and the exhaust comes through the barrel, it zigzags through this mass, and it, it's absorbing the heat out of the exhaust from the heater. Warms it up, and you can sit there and take a nap or read a book or you know, something like that. Um, they're used in barns, you know, great. If, you, you know, if you're out in a barn you want, or a shop, you want to heat it up real quickly, fire one of these things up, let it burn for a while, you know, do your work out there and go back in the house. Greenhouses, of course, are a great one. 
and um, I've run into one person that actually is heating their townhouse in an urban area where it is illegal to burn wood and you know you can't have fireplaces you can't have stoves of course no outdoor boilers and he adopted one put one into his townhouse and vents it out to the side of the building like it's a dryer vent and you can't tell that it's running and nobody has noticed it ever so you can you can sneak these things in in some pretty good places Well, well, maybe he's burning his junk mail. Who knows? 